What I have for you guys here today is a gigantic Woody. <laughs> can't even. No, but seriously, this wooden coaster is ginormous at 1.4 kilometers in length and 80 miles per hour. It is ripping across the landscape at the back of this end-to-end -end absolutely magnificent mega park called Marty Land. We're looking at multiple themed areas here today. We got some Western, pirate, steampunk, fantasy, East Asia, and so much more. This park does not lack in innovative and crazy coasters, as you can see with the gigantic Woody to kick off the introduction. We also have mine train coasters, massive dive coasters, winged launch coasters, and the list goes on and on and on. We also have some casual rides from River Rapids to Log Flumes, to full indoor dark rides included. This one looks really, really awesome. So stay tuned and let's check it out. Hey, yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to some more Park Spotlight. Today, we're going to be looking at Marty Land, created by Martin Homerman. All right, here they say Hi, Johnny. My name is Martin. First of all, I would like to thank you. I love your park tours. You've always inspired me very much. Without you, I would have not have managed to build such a park. Please keep up the good work. Well, that is very touching, but most of your inspiration comes from other people's parks. I just tend to ooh and awe over them. Although I'm pretty proud of Project Planko and how far that has come. So he continues to say here, I have tried for about two years to build a very realistic park with hotels, parking lots, beautiful design. The rides are therefore not quite as spectacular, but Beth definitely worth seeing. Also at night, the park looks really nice. Some buildings I have stolen from the workshop. Many thanks to the builders for this. I hope my park finds a place in one of your next tours. That is my goal in any case. You would make me really Really happy. Aw, I wish you the best greetings, Martin. Beautiful introduction. Very heartfelt, very warming, and that reflects in the park as well. I could see the personality in the letter shining through in the park. A very vibrant personality is Martin and a very vibrant park they have created for us here today. A super exciting one. So let's delay no further and jump right on into it. Okay, welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am revealing everything. I have nothing to hide here. As mentioned, it is an end to end, right from edge to edge, from down to the roads to the parking lot this park is covering it all you cannot fit any more in this sandbox and i have also let uh 4, guests into the park i still think they're trotting along in normally i just start at the park entrance but i felt like today it was kind of worth showcasing what martin here has done with all this exterior not only is there crazy amounts of parking lots but a whole road system bus tours at the back look at that we even have like a tour bus that goes out onto the road and and takes you on a little ride all the way around the park and there's even the guests on it like that is uh really going into detail crosswalks and everything although i think someone's gonna get plowed what? oh look at that <laughs> almost but not really yeah this is uh actually a, a quite incredible parking lot if i say so myself and it even goes down to here where we have like border patrol stuff this is crazy bridged networks like this is some city skyline stuff right here you guys and I felt like it was worth highlighting there. And to top it off, it also goes to the backside of this part of the park with a ginormous, beautiful hotel. Look at that. I mean, the amount of pieces, that's, that's like... 1300 pieces right there another 500 400 1200 the sides there 1400 the towers up top another 500 like a lot of detail gone into just that hotel alone we have you know pirate hotel on the other side of it and this is one way the guests can get into the park added multiple spawn points on all ends of the park so that they come into the park at an even distribution which i could really appreciate because when i usually led 4,000 guests in we get like this kind of front-loaded 
limited just crowd of people just pouring into the main street whereas here it's kind of distributed quite evenly and we even have like this beautiful reception area with these little i don't even know what these are like special condos i guess you can rent out these little condos it's super quite cozy in here definitely got these realistic vibes like you even built stuff down to uh that the kitchen and the stove there like wow this whole little area is really quite cozy and if this is a, a, a telling sign of what's to come i could imagine the rest of this park is going to be just as detailed so let me jump cut to the park entrance and here we are at marty land beautiful plaza area just bringing us towards the park entrance here so yes i do want to talk real briefly we have not had some official park spotlights as of 2024 uh really at all and that is because i've been dealing with project planko and the crashes and the park that we're building and we've then had some serious headaches there which just really put me out of uh the spirit of doing any content i got a little bit down on myself about it but we're moving forward and I have quite the lineup. I got about a dozen or so parks that all look to this quality. So if you like what you see here today, be sure to tune back in because I'm definitely going to be trying to do at least two or three park spotlights a week because we have such a fascinating and jam-packed lineup. So good news to anyone that is a fan of the show. If you're new to the show, hit that subscribe button and tune back in because we got lots of really good stuff and uh we're just ramping up from here beautiful garden work beautiful plaza area giving me a little bit of disneyland main street vibes over here we got fairy tale cars an indoor dark ride of sorts possibly cool i'm down let's kick things off with something a little mellow and then just dial it up from there <laughs> Isn't that like a Christmas song? What do we got going on in here? Magic Cats, Fairy Tale Cars. Let's check it out. Okay, this one's taking off right now. Um, it, it appears like the music is only in the station and not actually attached to the car ride. A little bit of a blunder there. I would have put it to the cars instead of the station so you have music everywhere. Oh, look at this. We got a little Candyland area. This is quite cute. Fun little festival. Yeah. Looks like it's going to take us through a few themes here. We got a mixture between candy and fantasy. Not mad at it. Let's go. I'm pretty excited about this park here. Um, when I haven't done park spotlights for a while, it definitely the excitement factor starts at a 10 for me and picking out something like this one here what called me to it was that gigantic wooden coaster i was like oh wow well this thing touches the sky and it looks like it's probably a two kilometer coaster and i was like this is the one turns out there's a lot more in this park then I, I would act I'd have to say that the Woody is probably the least impressive thing as I started to get the b-roll and poke around a little bit more I really like the look of the steampunk area there's like a spinning coaster over there I'm looking forward to that uh, the dive coaster looked really intricate as well as a winged launch coaster and all of those things have really got my attention but I also have that big giant wooden coaster to look forward to so, I mean, that's a nice little list right there. Four, four things that I'm, like, extremely excited to see with a whole lot of filler in between. And it's not just lackadaisy filler. It is top quality, pristine content. So we got a lot of really great things to look forward to in today's episode of Park Spotlight. Really nice lighting here. This takes us over to the little East Asia area. So we're going to... Um, I don't even know if it's Eastern Asian. <laughs> it's in the Eastern part of the park and it's Asian, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, the lighting's fantastic. Really good glow to everything. Love the little Christmas lights here, giving us a really good vintage look to everything. A mystic manor. Oh, would you look at this? I like by Zephor. Rest in peace, Zephor. Aw. 
Well, I'm definitely embracing this. We get a trip down memory lane. Wait, is this an exit? It has to be both. There's probably a queue down here somewhere. Uh, I mean... Zephor was a big part of this community. He, uh, recently passed away last year. Uh, not so recent anymore, but... Recent in my heart, it, it feels. But, um, one of the best builders in this community. And this creator said that... And a dear friend of mine, obviously. Uh, this creator here said... They took some stuff from the workshop. So, I'm assuming... And I like the fact that you credit it. As well as I know Zephor's creations, I don't really remember the Mystic Manor. This must have been one of the earlier ones that Zephor did. See you later. I do... I am getting a little bit of, uh... My, my, my memory's pulling on something here. Let's check this out. So this is, in fact, created by Zephor and not our uh, park creator here today. But that is quite okay because, like I said, Zephor is one of the best. Is this... Yeah. We're going to get on this one. Um, because of the uh, the seat being in the way, I think we're going to do, like, a pop-up view or a track view. Now, this is kind of at the back. Yeah, let's do a track view. Nice upfront and personal experience. Take a trip down memory lane and look at uh, one of Zephor's earliest creations here in Planet Coaster. Assuming this is um, probably around the time that the Spooky Pack came out and around the time that we were doing Halloween Spooky Contests that Zephor probably created this one. I am uh, going to mute the mic and grab myself a drink. I am parched and I haven't even begun, so I'm going to need it. Alright. Was this one called Mystic Manor? Definitely an older creation from Zephyr. Looking good as always. The lighting in here is really, really nice. Lacks a little bit of ambience. Might be, um... There might be a bug. Sometimes the music only works on certain cars. I've been noticing that, l that l recently. And back in the station we go. There's a little Mystic Manor dark ride from the one and only Zephyr. And let's get on out of here. A good job integrating the ride, though. Because if I... If I remember correctly, Mystic Manor was an actual manor, but the creator here has put it inside of their Main Street building. So you had to kind of do this whole underground network to get to the manor. So even though the creator used somebody else's ride, they had to go through the trouble of integrating it in such a way that livened up their Main Street, that made their Main Street a little bit more interesting. Just coming through the park entrance there, which is only yards away from us, we've already got to go into some of these Main Street buildings with queues, attractions, and dark rides, riding the uh, car ride as well as oh, a little bit of a flaw here. <laughs> Leave it to me to find your bugs, guys. But yeah, I think that's a great way of living in up a Main Street to make your Main Street a little bit more interesting, having these interior uh, rides. Because a lot of the time, these Main Streets are just walk down, see the shops, you know, couple storefronts, some decorative windows, and that sort of thing. Now, is, are we transitioning into a full-fledged fantasy area? That's what I think what, what is happening here. Let us go back to daytime for a little bit. My eyes are getting a little bit strained. I need some of that sunlight coming in. Uh, we're going to save the uh, fantasy for later. I want to head straight to the center piece of the park, which is that of the lake. 
and we have this beautiful steampunk area here. It's looking stunning. Absolutely stunning. But... I opened up the video with a uh, introduction to the wooden coaster. I think it's only appropriate that we make a beeline straight to the Woody and uh, see what it's all about. Kick things off with a bang. Our first coaster of the day being something fast, furious, and exhilarating. That is what I advertised, so let's deliver. Great garden work here from Martin using a lot of different flowers and flora. It's beautiful. Burke's Remedies, I recognize that. Little boat tours over here. Great looking western area. I think we have to go into the western area to get to the wooden coaster. Wouldn't surprise me. So we'll do a double pass, get on the woody, See what else this uh, western area has to offer. From the looks of things, it has a uh, log flume as well as a uh, um, mine train coaster. We're getting in queue for something. I'm here for it. I'm hoping it's the Woody. It might just be. Look at this. Really cool uh, queue interior. Gonna pass through some walls here. Jump, jump, jump ahead. Ooh. Speaking of Zafor, I recently built a boarding station for a wooden coaster that Zafor made for our park project Planko. So, something I just worked on a couple weeks ago, and uh, this has me pretty excited for that reason alone. Wood falls, green across the board. 1.3 kilometers in length, 80 miles per hour. A little bit of air time, not so much. Music's really loud, let's get on this. I like to ride the back of the train. Um, probably ride some of these coasters multiple ways here today. I don't see why not. What is this sound effects? It is so noisy over here. Gosh. Okay, I'm gonna speed up this lift because it is long. And there's not a lot to look at on either side of us. Always a good strategy to try to direction your lift hill in a way where when I look down the sides, I see a lot of really cool stuff. Not a whole lot going on over here. That's okay. I, I sped up the lift, but we're still not at the top. A bit of a pause here. Must be multiple trains running on this, and off we go. Let's do it. So what I'm going to do here for all the realism nuts. Let me pause it. I can't even hear myself think. I could probably just turn my headphones down, but we're going to close down the ride, delete the exit. It teleports them to the end. Undo that. And now we can go in test mode. This way, we don't have any flailing arms. I know a lot of uh, people complain about that. We can zip right to the top here with no flailers and give it an authentic seat view POV. And then I'll open it back up so we can see it with guests in the background. Let's go.
Not too bad. <clears throat> I might have hyped it up more than uh, more than it deserved. It's still a pretty awesome spectacle, but for me, the uh, track length wasn't as intricate and interesting as it could have been. Uh, the way it navigated the train is a little bit plainish. I would have liked to see more of the the hills and more of this kind of stuff here. <clears throat> traversing up and down and around the train. I do think this part of the uh, coaster itself looks a little bit more interesting, but a little plain on the back end. Would have liked to see a little bit more elements uh, introduced to that Woody there. But there's a lot of really interesting coasters and attractions throughout this park. So uh, I think there's some better things to look forward to than the Woody itself, but can't deny the height and speed of that was uh, really quite exhilarating. Really like the look of this log flume, Chopper's Creek. Going with the the vanilla name. The cube work has been really nice. Everything's been really thought, uh, thoroughly thought through. Lots of details. Oh, we just got, <laughs> we just got soaked. There it is. Yeah, the interiors for these boarding stations are really quite something, aren't they? Look at that. Even put some logs down as girders. All right. Um, ambience. Oh, there's almost so much ambience in this park, I can't even hear myself think. So, no complaints there. Chopper's Creek, this one. Look forward, a nice leisurely relaxing log flume adventure. Let's go. So, I said I got a pretty big lineup for Park Spotlights. Um, I did subscribe to something, or I noticed something on the workshop a while ago. There's somebody did a full Pokemon Red slash Blue redesign of the game, but in Planet Coaster. I'm not, like, crazy into Pokemon. I dabbled with Red and Blue as a kid. Really curious to know what it would be like in 3D, the, the original games. Because apparently, like, they built, like, most of the game. So, if that's something you guys like to see, let me know down in the comments below if you want to see the Pokemon Park. I'm going to have to find someone on Discord who's a Pokemon expert and bring them on as a guest or something. Because, um, I probably would miss a lot of the nostalgia and, uh, you know, key points of interest. But it looked pretty interesting. We also have a Lego Park which I thought might be fun to take a closer look at. And I got a whole bunch of other really good stuff. Some Alpine, some Disneyland. We've seen so many Disney parks, so it's always interesting to me to see what they've done different. And um, a lot of uh, interesting fantasy parks as well. Lots of good stuff to look forward to over the coming weeks of February and going into March. So... A lot of realism parks as well, from the looks of it. We have uh, Fantasy, Alpine, Adventure, Realism, Architecture, three or four more realistic parks, Adventure, Alpine, and Festive. So that's kind of my lineup that I've picked out for the coming weeks. We're just gonna plug away. Try to do two or three a week here, guys. Make up for some lost time. We had a bit of a slow start to the year, so. Beautiful views on this Chopper Creek. I like the way that the sun's coming in here. Great lighting. <clears throat> There's the mine train coaster off to the side. Yeah, I will say that the uh, rock work you did for the terrain. There's something above that's like a little bit flat, if I were to give that as a critique. Like down below, it's really nice here. But up top, it, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of flat. Coasters are kind of just laid on top. We'd like to see like more boulders and um, passageways. Just really like make it claustrophobic. Give you a lot more of that eye candy as you're passing by. There's a look at the Chopper's Creek log flume. Um, where's the exit? This side. What do we got going on here? Some sci-fi kennels? Okay. What are the kennels for? <laughs> They're getting off the uh, train right there. Here's the entrance. 
what's going on in this? The queue's like all sunken in. Oh! It's the actual train ride. I think we'll give that a ride at the end. Just kind of give my closing thoughts and sometimes these train rides can be really intricate and they take us around different areas of the park that we haven't really seen or at least haven't seen from certain angles. And sometimes you get some fun little vistas and views, some fun little Easter eggs even at times. So always worth it to give it a look. Yep, super immersive queue here. Long, long walks though. Ooh. I like how we come in from the upper balcony. It, it looked like we were coming in at like ground level, but that's a uh, really cool way to do it. Mm hmm, I like that. What we got going on over here is the Wild Canyon. Definitely riding the back of this one. It's the best way to look at it. Let's go. I really like the second half of that coming back into the station here. As I was saying, it felt a little bit flat at times. Uh, this area was quite cool. Having that cliffside kind of almost hanging over us as we went in, passed under this. I think if you were to like elevate it a little more, actually build a bridge here with like supports and stuff. So you get those almost head chopper moments and then build some more of these like uh, supports and mine shaft structures. I saw one cave that had the mine, some wood in there, but that's about it. I really like seeing all of that intricate woodwork in these mine train coasters. Uh, it really just adds that like depth to it, but not too bad, not too bad at all. Okay, um, I'm a little bit lost. I am now in bird's eye view. I'm just gonna pop out back to here. Pretty cool little Western area here. Saloon, I recognize this saloon. I definitely feel like that's off the workshop. In fact, I wanna say it's from one of our, uh, either our workshop, what, what, I don't know, blueprint spotlight is what we used to call it. It's either from that or from one of our shop contests. But always fun to see uh, familiar blueprints that came about through the community events and contests that I've hosted over the years on this channel. Speaking of which, I think it's about time for another. <laughs> Community is getting restless. We're pretty much done wrapping up our park with Project Planko. Spent almost the last year putting that together, organizing it, and getting it ready. And uh, after a project like that, I could really just uh, 
hang my hat up and say, you know, we, we created one of the best parks in Planet Coaster. And, um, we got a sequencer here. A water show. That's fun. Yeah, so for me, it's time to just get back into the rhythm of things again. I'm honestly, I know you put a lot of work into the water show, but I'm not here for it. I want to ride some coasters, but still a nice uh, touch there to have that there. Uh, yeah, let's go up into the Asian area. Why not? Um, but yeah, I think it's time for another contest. And I do have a good lineup of parks, but by the time we get through them all, we're not going to have that many left. <laughs> I always have a good backlog of parks to pick from and all different qualities, but uh, it seems to be like I build up like, you know, a dozen or so really, really fantastic parks like the one we're seeing here today. And then it comes, you know, it starts to uh, dampen in quality a little bit. And because we're at like Park Spotlight 600 and this is like 23 now, we've seen so much over the years that it's hard to like wow you guys anymore. I know if you're either new to the show or you just watch every other video or you click the ones that have the most interesting thumbnails, um, there's always something for you to discover on this channel and find that's exciting, beautiful, and fun. But for me, um, you know, there's a certain quality level that if it's not this or better, it's hard to impress me because I've seen so many. And therefore, I think it's not a bad idea to get the community going on a park contest. Because that'll generate like 40 really good parks. And uh, we could just do a park marathon. And in the past, we've done like mini park contests that were like kind of in a box. I would love to do something more organic. Give people different islands and uh, let them build their own park to whatever size and scale they want within the time limit that they're given and just see what they could do. Because I know some people have more time to dedicate than others and some people want to go big. So I, I, I don't think there should be any point in restricting people. Just uh, go all out this time and give people unlimited, well, not unlimited, but near unlimited restrictions. Sate Mate. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it is green across the board, almost a kilometer in length. Uh, what is this? Is this a floorless? Yeah, it's a floorless. Um, 61 miles per hour, four inversions. Let's, uh, I think we can ride seat view without that many flailers. And I think we're going to have to ride this one at night as well. I have a feeling it's going to have some pretty nice lighting. Let's go. I actually love to see this one in uh, track view. So they've got one taking up the lift right now. And um, yeah, let's check this out in track view at night. Yeah, the lighting's pretty fantastic. Let's see.
really solid lighting. I'm also appreciating all the little bits of realism in the back ends of the park. Just looking at uh, all of this stuff from the back end here. It's looking absolutely incredible. Love to see it. Look at all that. Lighting has a nice glow to it. Kind of want to walk around a little bit more during the night. I like the little pot lights that you put here to uh, put an undertone on all of your uh, plants. <laughs> I don't know why it just reminded me of um, Warhammer. <laughs> I uh, recently picked up a Warhammer 40k starter kit. I said I got a little bit depressed because our park was crashing. And that's why we haven't had that many videos over the last couple weeks. I just needed a break from YouTube. I needed a break from the computer. Jitsu Fitsu, what's going on in here? So yeah, I needed a break from the computer just entirely. Just not making content, not playing video games, just not doing anything. And uh, my cousin gave me a space marine to paint and a handful of paints and said, uh, have at her, dude, see what you think. The, 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 the very night that he gave it to me, I painted it. And then I was like, that was fun. I want to buy some of these. So like the next day, we drove down into Kelowna to the Warhammer store. And I picked up the starter pack for Space Marines versus Tyranids. Came with some Terminators, some Infernus Squad, uh, a commander or something, a lieutenant. I don't really know the terms yet. Um, but I got like all these, I call them Zerglings. I know they're Tyranids, but it reminds me of T Terran versus Zerg, StarCraft. I've already painted 15 of the Zerglings out of 20, and I got some big ones. So when I see things like people doing lighting that's coming from a below with pot lights and stuff, I start to think like, oh, how can I do highlights and like if I did an ominous lighting glow from underneath on, on a space marine or something and did the highlights from the bottom, how would that look? <laughs> so my brain is just running through paint mode for the last week and I've been really enjoying it. If uh, Warhammer is something you guys are into, let me know down in the comments below, what Warhammer do you, what what what, what faction do you play with? What uh, what got you into it? I'd love to see what you guys think of Warhammer. And if, if you guys wanna see what I'm painting, I could probably make some videos in the future here. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. So we got the Jitsu Fitsu, spent it Jitsu Fitsu here. 70 miles per hour, kilometer in length, no inversions, some airtime. So a bit of a like an Intamin launch coaster, I guess. Let's uh, let's check it out. Intamin Blitz, is that what it would be? Uh, you know what? I wanted to do track view, but this train has a weird camera. It slides. It puts the camera like here. It's kind of weird. So we're gonna have to go seat view. Uh, we're already at night, so let's check it out at night, and we'll uh, we'll we'll try it out at day as well. Let's try out the track view. Let's see if it's as bad as I remember it to be. I just don't know what other perspective I can do on this coaster, but let's, oh, maybe, is this the one I was thinking of? This one might not slide around, we'll see. No, you can see it there, it definitely like, sways. It's a little bit weird.
was actually much, much better in my opinion. <clears throat> Definitely simulated the the speed and ferocity that the intimate blitz should have. So I thought that was actually much preferable. So glad we did it there. Could use a little bit more, um, <clears throat> like I said, the, the terrain could be a little bit more extreme. I think it's uh, me being spoilt. One of the uh, most recent in memory parks that I did was refeaturing re a Rai Rai park. And they're, they go really heavy with the terrain. And after uh, after you experience like the real extremes in terrain, it's hard to... Uh, it's hard to not want it again. This is a cozy little area. Ah, you did the, uh, are these recolorable? They are. Oh, they, they're, they're the rose bushes. Okay. I want, I did a boarding station for Zephor and I wanted to do pink cherry blossoms for the station. Kiara said that you have to use the rose bushes. And I guess you take the twiggly, twiggly branch dead tree, add the road, rose bushes to it, and then recolor the rose bushes after. Very, very smart. That's how you do it. Okay, now I know for next time. Fun little uh, trick there. All right, we are embarking into the pirate area of the park. Uh, you got a sundial turned into a swinging pirate ship? Whoa, I've actually never seen that before. That is freaking fantastic. Normally I, I would, would have said like, why did you put a sundial in a pirate area? It just doesn't work. You made it work, and I can appreciate that. That's <laughs> so cool. Oh my goodness. That is way better than just going, oh, I put down the pirate ship flat ride. There you go. That's super sick. Fun little intricate area. This is the uh, motel, uh, motel hotel that we looked at uh, at the back of the park at the very, very beginning of the video here. Um, I feel like this is taking me out of the park, but I think we can loop back around. Uh, this is, I believe, a dive coaster. Very intricate, windy dive. Is it an exit only? I feel like it is. We're probably gonna have to go around. Yeah, look how far this stretches out here. Like, normally dives, this, this feels more like the intricacy that you would see from a winged launch coaster, more so than a dive, but I like the creativity of that. Pretty hyped about this one. How big is the dive on that? 40 meters? 30? I'm gonna guess... 35. 30. <laughs> I'm getting closer and it's getting smaller. <laughs> Wait, what the heck? What just happened? Oh, I jumped over. Oh, yeah. That's what I get for jumping queues. The exit is running right beside the queue from the looks of it. I like the layering here. Yeah, this is really cool. Oh, we have arrived. Oh, look at the little pond and waterfall you got here in the queue. Ooh, that's a really nice little area. Let's check it out. We got to go dive um, right in the middle. Whoa, spoiler alert. Middle seat. They shouldn't flail too bad because I think their arms are locked in. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I didn't check the uh, stats. 44 meters is the biggest. I said 30 to 40 and I kept changing my mind. <laughs> 44. Not mad at it. Yeah, this is quite the intricate setup you got going on here. Let's go. Wow, look at the motel from up here. That is astonishing. 
really shows you the uh, scope and scale of this park. There's the wooden coaster that we went on way earlier. And look, look how many more coasters there are we haven't been on yet. And I'm looking at my recording, it's like 50 minutes. That is crazy. All right, let's check this out. Yeah, in the uh, terrain, in contrast to what you did with the western areas, uh, I really like what you did here. See, there's a lot more going on with the terrain, and I, I, I don't know if it was because you felt you had more tools with all the, the different foliage and different pieces, but you could definitely vibe and vibe up the... Uh, western area with similar instead of using the foliage you use the rocks some of those little props and little campways and stuff like that there's definitely a lot more you could do with it is th there's an inverted coaster right beside us that is wait a second are those dummies oh no you painted the white i was gonna say is it not open that's why the dive coaster looks so intricate to me and uh, after we wrote it i was like thinking huh that was shorter than it appeared to be you colored both the co coasters the exact same i wonder if it would have been better to what's the track color on this oh that's yeah i mean something maybe something like that i don't know just to differentiate them a little bit hmm interesting nonetheless i kind of want to see if there's any nighttime lighting on this definitely is let's check out the dive again this one's about to drop and we'll do it in track view let's go All right, let's uh, head straight over to the inverted coaster. I have no idea where the entrance is for this, so we're gonna cheat a little bit. Um, that's not it. It appears like it's down here. So didn't I come in this way? Maybe not. The rival. Okay. I actually feel like this is gonna be way more immersive at night. Yeah, look at that. Ooh. <laughs> What is this? A little random dwarf in here. Where am I going? Holy moly. This feels like the setup for a dark ride. This is sick. Wow. I like what you did with the bones. That's a good idea. Very inspiring. Okay. I also notice you have so much ambience on all of the stations and throughout the park, but all the coasters have no music. Interesting decision there. I usually like it the other way around personally, but ambience is better than no ambience. A kilometer in length on this guy, three inversions. 46 miles per hour is the max speeds. Definitely going seat view. And uh, yeah, I guess we could keep it at night here. Why not? Off we go. Ooh, I like how we start off uh, going on a little bit of a tour here through all that scenery you made. Really intricate uh, cue on that one. Quite enjoyed that. 
So the other half of the track that I mistake for the uh, dive coaster, which you can see right above us there, the underbelly of the coaster, all that track belonged to this here coaster. Let's see how it goes. I got a boat ride over there. Wow. We got a boat ride, river rapids, and a log flume on this park. Crazy. Love to see it. Yeah, the, uh, oh, there's a cannon there at the end. Um, the, the terrain is definitely levels better than what we saw over on the western side of the park. It's almost like you, uh, built the western side of the park first and then got better and then did this. I want to check it out one more time at day. I feel like there's a bit of a missed opportunity here because it's so intricately woven into the dive coaster. I wonder if there was a way you could have made them dual synchronized so that when we're kind of flying above it looking down at it if they were kind of lined up you know that would have been like a nice little touch there because i feel like there's so many points at the coaster where we should be interacting with the other one but it's nowhere to be seen and i wonder if you just link them if just happy accident they would have some moments where they line up that would definitely would have uh been the cherry on top for me but I, I do like flying through all these trees and stuff. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, good experience. That's fun. All right, we still have so much to explore. Let's keep going. Uh, almost an hour already into this park tour. That is just crazy. We're, we're coming back with a vengeance, with a massive park, tons of content here, still tons more to discover. So let's keep on keeping on. Whole steampunk area here. There was a boat ride. Let me pause for a second. Where was that boat ride that I saw? It was like off in the distance. That's the river rapids over here. Yeah, before, ooh, Pirates of the Caribbean. That's cool. Probably again, a nighttime experience. It's probably gonna be a dark ride. Ooh, I like the purple glow on that ship. We're passing over the ride right there. Yeah, I definitely wanna check this one out at night. We're gonna ride it once. And then we'll do the river rapids at day and we'll get a nice little contrast between the two of them. Let's freaking go. What do we got going on here? It is the boat rider mod it. Not that long in duration, but tends to be a pretty short ride overall or a slow ride rather. We'll sit in the middle. I think we have to pop up the camera. 
Yeah, let's see what this is all about. I already love it. <laughs> this is crazy detail. Wow, I love the little moon up there at the starry sky. It's like a beautiful little mini set. Super cool. Tortuga Island. This area looks amazing. Look what they did that soft gradient blue sky. That is phenomenal. I was going to say Tortuga Island. If I go to my channel, Tortuga Island. Thought we had a park called that. I'm not seeing it come up here, though. Yeah, this is a really detailed dark ride. Davy Jones Tavern. My favorite scene was that last one we were in. That was really well done. Although this is pretty cool too. Super atmospheric. I think this is the best experience in the park so far. Hands down. The guys are peering out of the hole in the ship. Oh my god. Look at all this chaos. Wow. The remnants of an epic pirate battle. All squeezed into this one little area. Really well done. I'm a fan. The Black Pearl. He said 400 meters in length. Um, that's the most jam-packed, detailed 400 meter experience I have seen in a very, very long time. Incredibly well done. Ha! What is this music? <laughs> Wow! That was awesome. <laughs> Did the creator make this themselves? Because I know that we saw a Zephyr ride. Uh, this brings us back to the entrance. Let me um, let me go check if there's a builder sign out front. I'm not seeing one here. So they must have built this themselves, otherwise they would have credited the person who did it. That was phenomenal. All of that was packed into here. Wow. I love the little realism bits on the top there. Hmm. Yeah, that's my favorite experience in the park so far. Super glad we did that before moving on to the next area, which we are going to fly to. Because I already... Uh, I read it was already over here. Where am I? I think we can get there from here. Oh, we got a cinema or something in here? Stage? Look at that. Oh. Oh, it is a stage. Neat. 
<laughs> All right, let's do some steampunk stuff. Although uh, there was a river rapids, I also was it in this area? Steamland. It might be. Wow. Wow. We might be saving the best for last here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the clock fell over. That's sick. <clears throat> wow. The Atom Runner. Look at all these contraptions. The station, I'm gonna assume that's the train station. Maybe not. It might be a spinning coaster. What's on- what's going on in here? Whoa! Look at that, the train crashed. Hell yeah! This is, uh, pretty gnarly, if I say so. Wow. Oh, that's the back, the front of the train they crashed through. Whoa. All right, let's check out this station. I have a feeling it might be the spinning coaster, not the train. I hope I am correct. It is the train. How do we get to the spinning coaster? Did I miss a sign? Are you guys screaming at your monitors right now? Spiral. There's an arrow. Has to be. Has to be. Is it in here? Ah! Spiral. There we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I also feel like this would be better at night. Yeah, I want to see this steampunk area at nighttime. And the spinning coaster should give us a lot of <laughs> different angles, that's for sure. Ooh. Um, oh, this one's getting up the lift right now. Actually, you know what? I want to see it from the very beginning. I will say we'll do a track view to start things off. So our camera locked. Then we'll do the spin at day. Oh, and there's the river wrap. It's perfect. So we can hit that up next as well. Look at those gears. My goodness. It's definitely steampunkified. Oh, now I got hiccups. I'm gonna mute the mic.
Wow, that is uh, incredibly intricate. I gotta say, the uh, the amount of detail that you put into the steampunk area is just ridiculous. And because of that, it kind of did the theming for you. You're able to run that spinning coaster all the way up the clock tower there. And as a result, we got these beautiful views of the park, but also as they're spinning around, a good look at all the intricacies of the gears and steampunkishness of it all. And now we got the Atom Runner over here. And then I don't know how many more coasters and dark rides are in this park, but I'm guessing there's a couple. Uh, we definitely have that River Rapids. And there might be another indoor dark ride somewhere. Some toxicity going on here. And some ominous music. All right. They're advertising burgers in here. <laughs> I don't know if I want to eat the burgers after seeing all this. Oh my goodness. I gotta say, you, most of your cues are so detailed. Um, in comparison, like, not all the coasters were incredibly themed, but all of the queues have been. I feel like you, uh, put majority of the effort and time into the queues in comparison to some, some of them, like the mine train coaster, like, wooden coasters are definitely harder to theme, but the mine train in particular is the one that stands out. Like, look at this. Um, some, some of the exterior areas in some of the areas could have, had they been elevated to this level, would have been the complete package for me. But if I were to get, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Next level queue design and boarding stations. Absolutely on every single one of these coasters throughout this park. And I can definitely appreciate that. And while that might not carry through the whole coaster, generally in real life, if we're looking at realism, coasters don't have a lot of theming. I just come to expect a lot more doodads and head chopping moments and really crazy views uh, from coaster experiences from the game, right? A lot of people just make stuff wild, wacky, and crazy. And I think you're onto something here. You've done a great job at everything so far. And uh, just by minor critique with a little bit more theming, mean on some of the landscapes for the coasters. Look at the stats on this 1.8 kilometers and 11 inversions. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, these interiors are just next level, but it definitely goes to show that I think your niche is dark rides. Like that Pirates of the Caribbean ride was just next level. I love the ominous uh vibe going on here. I definitely think we're gonna have to ride this one at night. From the looks of it, these are all like red siren lights or something. Hmm. Yeah, but I've been in love with these uh, interiors so far. Really good job. What's going on here? Speed it up. Uh, there's obviously a, another coaster that hasn't hit its brake section yet. Alright, here we go. Wow, 
I really love the contrast of the uh, green uh, green toxicity against that sandy rock. Uh, pretty cool atmosphere. I want to see this uh, at nighttime. We're going to do a track view for this one. And I might even jump to the next train. Uh, no. Here we go. I'm going to speed it up here. Ooh. Super creepy. You can't even see where the tunnel ends. I like that. That is a wild coaster, 11 inversions, two kilometers in length. I definitely love how as we got to our top speeds, you shoot us out right onto the lake. We almost skipping across the lake. Really cool feel to it. There's a look at the steampunk area at night, kind of ominous. Oh, wow. I love this one by one Monsieur Freed steampunk shop. <laughs> that is really cool. It's time for uh, another shop contest, maybe. It would actually be a fun idea. I've, we've done so many shop contests in over the years, but just as like a quick one week contest, maybe we could do like a one by one shop. One by one meaning like one meter by one meter, what we just saw there. Um, boat tour, I wanted to get to the River Rapids. Oh, there's a boat tour. I'm not gonna ride this one, but I, I wanna check out the terrain here. Ooh, I like the uh, paint colors going on here. Oh, wow. This is uh, quite nice. Oh, I like this beach side here. Yeah, very nice. Nice. Yeah, this terrain seems really, really nice to me. I would have liked to see a little bit more of this stuff while riding the uh, mine train coaster. Pretty good. Okay, let's jump over to the River Rapids. Where is... Oh, is this the entrance here? No, it's back here. So this is um, the Rolling River. I'm assuming it's part of the uh, uh, pirate area. Huh. Kind of hidden down at the bottom off the side of a cliff in a cove. Very cozy. I'm unsure how much we have left. This, for all I know, could be the very last ride in the park, but I will use the ride list for this park in particular and make sure that we haven't missed anything. Um, I did say I wanted to check out the uh, the train where there's so many rafts on this thing. Um, I usually like to do this view. We'll go with that. Uh, yeah, so at the very least, we're gonna check out the train next, unless there's a couple surprise hidden dark rides. There. This creator had did two dark rides in the um, main street, one in the pirate area. So I have this like feeling that in order to balance things out, there might be one on that side of the park for all we know. Maybe one hit in the Western area or somewhere in the more fantasy style area. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, wasn't there a whole fantasy area on the left when we came in that I didn't even explore. For all I know, there might be a whole nother themed area. The uh, vastness of this park has taken me back. 
I knew it was an end-to-end -end park, but, you know, there's the parking lots, the road system, and the lake in the middle. Never did I ever think I would be uh, going over an hour and a half on this park, which is a good thing. It threw me for a surprise. Whoa, the water's kind of green. <laughs> Swamp water. Oh, don't get that in your mouth. Yeah, it's been uh, quite a surprise. A very, very good mega park to kind of re-spark the Park Spotlight series for 2024. A uh, good one to start off with, and I was, uh, it was kind of a coin flip between this and something else. Well, actually the, uh, whoa, cracking in the swamp. The wooden coaster is the thing that made me uh, decide on this one overall. Caught my attention, but the one I'm gonna be recording after this also looks very, very good. So, pretty excited about the potential. Whenever we don't do Park Spotlight for a while, a bunch of new ones come in, and we start to build up a bunch of bangers. A lot of legend builders. You see Mr. Vanderpants in there, Branjo, Sublines, uh, Potatoes 55, a lot of recognizable names, as well as some new ones. Very, very cool. And we did uh, talk about doing some revisits. I saw you guys saying go back and check out Frozen Coasters with the new computer, the new setup. I tried opening that one up and I wanted to record it for the uh, December winter kind of festival that we did for like Christmas and stuff. But even Frozen Coasters was like still five frames per second on this computer. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Probably the biggest Arctic mega park ever created in Planet Coaster history. I don't even think having a new computer helped revisit it. So I kind of like didn't uh, didn't re-record it. But I'm still open to the idea. If anybody has like uh, a certain park that they really love that they would like to see in 4K with reshade and and better frames. I'm still open to the idea, so feel free to leave suggestions down in the comments below. Uh, because it is 2024 and, and I'm going to be going over the comments for the most recent videos again, it'll be it'll refresh my memory. So uh, I can look through that all over again and kind of decide if, if there's any reruns that I want to go back and check. But in the meantime, I do have a pretty good lineup of new stuff that I want to work through. Um, but for after that, Definitely mix in a rerun or two. Absolutely. I am already out of water. Oh my god. Oh, this is a this has been a doozy. So you pretty much did every water ride in the in the game. Boat ride, log flume, river rapids. Almost need a water cascade just to like you know seal the deal. So there it is. That's a look at the River Rapids, ladies and gentlemen. Where are we at? What are we looking at here? I just want to do a pass over the whole park. Well, there's a Junior Wendigo. Yeah, I said that there's like a fantasy area over here. Um, oh, look at this. I love seeing all these uh, storage facilities, hangar bays. It's so cool. The studio setup. Very nice. Yep, we have what appears to be a little fantasy area. I did uh, poke in there at the beginning of the video, but I was thinking that this took us over into fantasy, but it actually takes us over into Western. So this is the whole fantasy area. It's just a cute little cozy fantasy corner, but there was a station in here. How do we get in there? Wendigo. I like how you kept all the names vanilla. <laughs> Wendigo. Usually, like, the funnest part of uh, creating these things is putting your own spin on it, right? What am I going to call this? What's the what's the theme? How does the name play into it? This creator, Martin? Nope. We're going Wendigo. We're going Chopper's Creek. <laughs> Not mad at it. Just sticking to it. Okay, it's take it off. We got to get on this. I don't think anyone really cares to see the stats on a Wendigo. Not even the guests care, because there's no one on this ride. This poor Wendigo. We're going at it solo. But I love a good junior Wendigo. Especially when it's, like, integrated. Uh, it looks like it's going up and around the, 
the rooftops here, around a little dragon there. We're actually quite high up for a junior ride. That's pretty crazy. I like it. It almost would have been better to use the uh, dragon. We're like flying through the city. The caterpillar needs to crawl the hillside. Ooh. Super cozy decorations. And there it is. Okay, let's do ride list. Ride list. Oh, <laughs> you have a dragon. Say what? Look at this. Look at that. It's not a very intricate one. And uh, of course the queue is insanely elaborate in comparison. But I gotta appreciate the details that you put into your queues, your boarding station, and your setup. We're gonna just throw it straight into test mode because uh, there's nobody getting on these little juniors anyway. Well, we did find another coaster. Matter of fact. There we go. I like the color pops here. The bright oranges, the uh, red and green. Whoa, your lift hill has a little bit of a problem there. It's like you decorated it. <laughs> And you're like, I don't need to ride that junior again. It seems to do just a standard figure eight. Oh, a little koi pond down there. Or passing over the car ride, which was the first ride that we went on in the park. Oh. Simple, but still intricate. Passing over and under the sandwich part of the roof. We got a branch problem though. Underneath that little, uh, Passageway there. Pa pathway? Very nice. I quite like that, actually. Less is more. Okay, let me get back to the ride list. All right, that is all of it. We That leaves us with the uh, train station here. The train ride. I'm probably going to get my volume down for this. Yeah, let's, let's get the volume down so I can hear myself think. Looks like we're in the western area near the mine train coaster and log flume as a... Uh, point of reference of where we begin and end. Let's give our final thoughts and discussion while we check out the final ride of the day, a transport ride. A ridiculously awesome theme park, a great one to return back to. Uh, it's the type of creativity and inspiration that I like to see uh, to get me going, to get me excited to do more recordings like this, to dig a little deeper through the inbox and way to catch my attention. You know, when you're building these theme parks, guys, make sure your screenshots look good. Like when I have 100 parks to look through at all very, very good quality, you know, three, four, five stars out of five in terms of like effort and all that, it comes down to like what catches my attention and the, the, the vastness of this plus these outstanding massive coasters, the details of the steampunk area. It wasn't just the Woody that caught my attention. There were some good screenshots of what we see here with the steampunk. And I thought, wow, this looks like an adventure that I want to go on. So again, shout out to Marty Martin Homerland uh, for, you know, putting all the work two years into building this park, but then making sure that those screenshots uh, the te show the attention to detail gone into it. Sometimes, um, you know, you could spend so long in a park, but you just give me a screenshot of a piece of concrete, and I'm like, I'm not going to open that. <laughs> and sometimes I miss your creation. So, uh, good job at, you know, advertising, selling the park, and, and depicting it in all of it, the glory that it is. The park itself, really realistic. I loved all the staff facilities, the attention to detail with the back areas. Uh, I got to give you a five out of five stars on all the queues and boarding stations. I thought they were just next level. The Pirates of the Caribbean dark ride was my favorite in the whole park. The scenes were just incredible. I, I did mention that like I had one little gripe, a uh, few coasters in particular like the uh, the toxicity one, the Atom or whatever it was called, as well as the Mine Train Coaster. The terrain left a little bit of something to be desired. It kind of just was a coaster on top of some wavy terrain. I think in the future, um, or what would have made those a little bit more interesting, 
is if we're kind of crashing down into the terrain and digging through it a little bit and popping up higher to get those viewpoints of the park and then down below um, rather than just kind of like meandering around the surface it would have been a little bit more extreme to get closer to that terrain to uh, you know because it's you get this the real feel of the speed of everything so that was my only critique and it was only for maybe a handful of coasters two or three uh, a lot of them in particular the one like the dive coaster as well as the inverted coaster kind of had that theming and that uh, terrain work done for it by simply watch out uh <laughs> by simply having such a lush jungle right the atmosphere of this jungle is really really good so running those coasters through it became really uh had a lot of eye candy pirate stuff seemed really good as well so yeah i mean overall everything was just uh, a banger complete banger i particularly really enjoyed embarking through the queues and getting to the stations and a lot of the coasters were really really awesome in terms of uh as like the uh, the overall design and coaster elements used they did say at the top of their submission um that they what did they say the rides are therefore not quite as spectacular, but definitely worth seeing. So they even came out and admitted that like their rides were their weak point. They're the part that they needed to work on. And everybody has a weakness that you grow better at with practice. And there are some rides that were, you know, I felt like could have used a little bit of um, more attention to detail, but then there was others that were just incredible. So you can, the, the builder's obviously capable of doing that for all of their rides, but not right out of the get-go. They got better with practice, with experience, as they developed the park further. Uh, they, you know, started to elaborate on things, and some of the themes and elements, they were just naturally either more inspired by or just better at. Um, so I, I really thought everything was just 5 out of 5, amazing. Uh, again, right out of the get-go, the beginning of the park, we saw the beautiful parking lot with the tour buses going through and the road systems and bridges and the really crazy hotels. You really set the tone right out of the get-go that, like, this is going to be, like, a big Disneyland-style experience. And then you went over the top with the theming, the queues, the uh, the detail, the realism, the, the walking through the main street. Everything was super captivating. So I definitely get like almost Disneyland vibes coming out of this park. And yeah, some of the coasters could be just a little bit more over the top, but like most, pretty much all of them were like at least four out of five. Some maybe a three, but um, that's a very, very minor critique. The actual experiences themselves, the coaster layouts and riding them in track view felt good. So overall, absolutely stand-up job on this park here today. Martin Homerman. Hope to see your name show up in the inbox again. They said in the, the top of their email, their submission, that they uh, been inspired by the show and watching it for years, and they spent two years building up Martinland. And look at this, guys. Absolutely incredible. That was the hour and 40 minute journey that we just walked through and uh wow what a what a fantastic experience at that i usually like to ask you guys to leave me down in the comments below what was your favorite area and why what was your favorite coaster and why and i try to do the same for myself i didn't even notice this big strip here that also divides and goes through um really intricate road system i really like that uh it's i, I i'm i'm going with the pirates of the caribbean I just loved it. I thought it was really well done. And favorite area, Steampunk. I thought that was really, really good. Yeah, this was fun. This uh, spinning spiral ride in particular really showcased the Steampunk. And it's one thing to build it, but it's another to build it and showcase it. And I think we had a lot of uh, immersion by riding that coaster, right? And I still say this, that, that was kind of like my critique with this one. I would have actually preferred had this coaster traversed around some of these buildings and up and around and twisted. And then the steel from that coaster could have been wrapping around some of these clock towers and in between some of these buildings. I think that would have steampunkified the area even more. And um, 
yeah, I think I think if some of this coaster had some more traversal around like the, the spinning coaster would have definitely elevated the steampunk area just a tad bit more, but definitely still my favorite area nonetheless. Um, yeah, and the, the centerpiece lake with the coaster ripping through it, I thought that was awesome. So much good things to go in this park, so I'd love to know what you guys in particular really, really liked. And an awesome Woody. <laughs> that thing was massive. <laughs> What a way to kick things off. Uh, what the max heights, what was the max heights on this guy? Biggest drop is 62 meters, but it's still a lot taller than that. It's probably almost a hundred meters. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a fun one. I'm very happy with that coaster spotlight experience. Start to finish, great vibes. Marty Land was a, a five out of five experience for me. Great job, Martin Homerland. Hope to see your name again in the inbox one day in the future. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for you. Be sure to come join us on Discord because Martin, you are unranked, which means you haven't joined Discord yet. And based off this creation alone, I'd have to give you at least uh, advanced just to start off, even if this is the only thing on your workshop, for sure, if not expert. Absolutely masterful park overall. What did you guys think? Throw your comments down below, and that is going to do us do it for us today in Park Spotlight. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye now.